Overnights with Tony Amos. 0800 844 747. Magic Talk. Talking about television before, well, media in general terms, but ask the question about TV, you know, television, like the print media, in its sunset years, traditional television is pretty well accepted. It's not, it's not spiralling down, but it's, it's on the sink because of, you know, competition. Good competition around. Like online and Netflix and all those things. Anyway, uh, we did have the conversation about most of us still watch free to air TV at some stage, watch something. I mean, I watch a lot of live sport. That comes on television, not always on free to air. Of course, it comes on, on pay TV. Your yeah, live sport, I like that. Have a text though, it says, um, Who's this one from? This one's from, from Sarah. Sarah says, Tony, my goodness, says Sarah, we haven't watched mainstream TV for 10 or more years. We don't read newspapers or watch 6 o'clock news as we get this information online. Sarah says, the latest debate's the first time we've turned on television for years. Regards from Sarah. Cheers, Sarah. Oh, don't you miss sport, Sarah? Or don't you watch sport? Nice to have your company. Thank you for your text. Sheila says, hi, Tony. Hello, Sheila. Sheila says, the poll should have been taken after tonight. Sheila, Sheila says, Judith won easy. Thank you, Sheila. I, I think that um, I think that, that comment from Dell, you know, that might have a little bit of relevance. Well, a lot of relevance with respect to Dell. That uh, perhaps Labor Party people might have thought that Jacinda Ardern did okay. And National Party people might have thought Judith Collins said okay, but neither may have swayed anybody from the position that they'd already taken. The bit on the side question tonight, what was your totally absolute favourite childhood meal? Well, Roger in Rangiora, just down the road from Sheila, Roger says, Tony, my favourite meal as a kid, steaming hot corned beef with a cheesy white parsley sauce and boiled carrots and mashed potatoes. Yum, says Roger. In the Rangiora. Sounds pretty good, Roger. <laughs> we'll have some too. Thank you. It is 26 to midnight. This is Magic. Yeah, Hello, Cameron. Hungry. How are you? Hi, Tony. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm getting very hungry and I'm just looking at the time. The midnight hour is fast approaching um, and that, of course, means time for the midnight snacks. So that's quite relevant. Tonight. There you go. So it's your own little game, your own version of the Hunger Games about to start in just over 25 minutes' time. Hey, Cam, yesterday was your yes. birthday. May I say happy birthday to you for yesterday, Cam? Oh, thank you very much. Fortunately, we've still got about, let me see, about 27 minutes to go, I would say. Oh, we are in the day of your birthday. Well, even better, so, yeah, I, yeah. I, so I'm not late. I'm saying happy birthday to That's you. That's okay. Have, have you had a happy the, birthday? Uh, Has it been a happy birthday I, for you? I have. Um, and I, I, I better um, say thank you very much to everybody because a heck of a lot of people listening um, have sent me texts or Messages five messages. There you go. It's your birthday. It Say, Dad, it's your birthday. And people yes. care about people's birthdays. So yes. happy birthday to you. I, ho I hope you celebrated well. I hope you had a nice lunch. I certainly did. I, I had lunch with mum at my favourite coffee shop in town. So that was lovely. Yes. Um, while we're while, while, while on the matter, can I very quickly say thank you very much to um, a, a friend of us both, uh, Dulles. Um, who uh, recorded a video not too long ago uh, on his piano, and that has to be one of the best renditions of Happy Birthday I can recall uh, in recent years that I've heard. So thank oh. you, Dallas. Oh, there you go. Well, well done and well said. Yes, thank you. Yes. Um, did you know, and you probably um, may not, uh, but tonight is also a very uh, important historic occasion, and, and you're part of it. Well, you better tell me what it is. Well, because 32 years ago tonight, at the very grand old age of just 12, back in 1988, I made my very first call to talk back. There you go. Mm. 32 that years ago. That's, 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 that's ago. quite... Well, it was a long time ago, wasn't it? Eh? 32 years yeah. ago. That's, that's ages ago, Cam. And the good thing is, mate, oh. you are still doing it. So that's a good result as well. Oh, it is. I look forward to the next 32. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yes, I, I, I thought that may be the case, but um, we, we do live in hope after all. I may not I may not be involved in 32 years' time, Cam, but I wish you well, and when you get to that point, you may toast and think of me as well in that, in that brief moment. I, I will 
do so. Um, yes, I, I certainly will. Um, and and others that have uh, gone gone before us, of course. Um, now, I, not surprisingly, I, I was glued to the first leaders debate tonight. Um, I, I thought it was more pertinent to uh, to watch that uh, than my usual indulgence of Shortland Street. In three words, um, in three words, mm -hmm. can, can you uh, can you give a br very brief summary of three words on the leaders' debate that you watched? Um, or use four, 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 four words if you need to. Mm, I, I'd say somewhat lack luster. Me too. Yeah, I, I was a bit ho hum on it. Um, some have said Judith um, came out about, I think I saw about 54%. Others were claiming Jacinda got 40% of it. Um, but then depending on which way your bias is, because I'm not a national person, but there, there were times that Judith was performing well, um, performing well, sorry. And of course there were times that Jacinda was performing well. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I was expecting a bit, a, a bit more. Yeah. Maybe we, maybe we've lifted our expectations too high. Maybe there have been uh, better performances in the past. I don't know. But I think that one yeah. of the things that that uh, left the room feeling a bit flat was the lack of a live studio audience. Well, yes, yeah, so that that does always help. Um, because then, of course, they'd be standing up asking questions and all that sort of thing. Um, whether or not we see the studio audience in a couple of weeks, I think the next one is. Um, that, that will be interesting to see. Yeah. So it, it's interesting the way the numbers are going with uh, for David Seymour. I'm, I'm watching that quite closely. I've, it's been a long time since ACT have had any number inside the house. Yeah, I mean, ACT are a little bit like, like um, New Zealand First. They've been up and down with their numbers. You know, they've, they've, they've had they'd have similar size caucuses at different times and been up and down with their numbers. And, and David Seymour has been the sole MP for some time now from yeah. in Epsom and, and only there really at the um, because the National Party allow him to be there. But this time, of course, they, they've got their own their own tracks on the ACT Party and polling at 7%, that's, that's good news for them, good news for David Seymour, good news for those who run the party and, of course, great news for the supporters who like the party as well. And he's had that, I've mentioned it before, he's had the welcome door open for disappointed or disaffected or just brassed off National Party supporters because there have been a few this year because of the, the chaos that's been around the National Party with leadership changes and, and other circumstances and scandals that have happened. So a lot of blokes rushed off to the ACT Party. And, of course, the other part that's uh, helped the ACT Party is what we term loosely as the gun lobby, which needed a, home, a political home to go to, and, and they found one with the ACT Party, yeah. and by Jove's, that's given them some good support, and, and that 7% would translate into about nine members of Parliament for the ACT Party. So for them, mate, they'll be uh, they'll be celebrating tonight, unlike New Zealand First yeah, on will. 2%, because 2% translates oh, into nothing in Parliament. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, you know, um, 2%, boy, um, we've seen numbers like that um, several times over the years, um, and, and with the exception of just once, they've always uh, made, made a return. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what what uh, happens there. Somebody told me um, recently. I, somebody told me recently about the uh, about the New Zealand First bus. You know, it's on the road, like Willie Nelson's yes, bus. But, but, I'm, but I'm sure what happens inside the bus isn't what happens inside Willie Nelson's bus. I'm sure that's a different experience. But the New Zealand First <laughs> bus has been has been on the road, and and of course, you know, accompanying the bus is the backup vehicle, the van, and the van carries several suits for the very dapper leader of New Zealand First, the Right Honourable Winston Peter, so he can have a suit changes for different destinations. And I had this funny thought when I heard about that, and I was thinking about, you know, the political fortunes aren't flashed for New Zealand First, and perhaps, perhaps there's an analogy there with Elton John, who, uh, who, oh. got, who got partway through his final tour um, with costume changes happening, of course, and I wondered about the New Zealand First as well. Is, is Winston Peters halfway through his final tour with costume changes? Quite possibly. Um, I'm not sure if you know, but uh, I think it was Saturday? I think it was Saturday morning. 
um, the New Zealand bus team were um, in, in sorry the New Zealand first bus and Winston and all the hangers on uh, were visiting the Coromandel you see and they just so happened to visit a particular art shop in the main street of Thames and a uh, a, a very fantastic news reading friend of ours happened to have a nice photo uh, with Winston. I didn't see that. That's Aroha, yeah. and her business is called yeah. Aroha Art, and it's in Thames, and it has wonderful New Zealand art. And if you ever go to Thames, Aroha's art shop is a must stop, actually. I'm planning a repeat visit. Not not this year, um, but but at some stage, I'm, 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 I definitely need to get back up to ten, Thames to see. Uh, Leslie and Steve, of course. Good on you, Cam. So uh, we'll have to drop in and see her uh, and uh, we'll have to pop next door to the uh, brilliant Solar Cafe who does fantastic coffee. Well, there you go. You're a yes. coffee fiend and you know where to find them. But, mate, I'm glad you've had a great birthday. It's nice to hear from you. you. En enjoy the last around about a quarter hour of it. Make the most okay. of it. Now, before you do sneak off into the last bit of your birthday, the bit on the side question for you, Cam. What mm. was your totally, absolutely favourite childhood meal? Oh, good grief. I'm, I'm going to be hungry um, real before five o'clock, I like think. Like the wolf. Um, I, I, yeah, I think it was Roger that had me um, before with uh, the corned beef and all the rest of it. Don't forget the mustard sauce, Roger. Um, but for me, it would be roast lamb with the, with the mint sauce. Um, whether it was either um, grand, uh, Granddad or Nana on Dad's side of the family or Nana um, on Mum's side, uh, they, they could both um, pull off a fantastic Sunday roast. Fantastic. Sounds like Portnoy's complaint. A lovely, lovely sound there, Cam. Nice combo. Yeah, real Kiwi meal too, eh? Roast lamb with mint sauce. Jade says... Bit of a change of subject. Hi, Jay. Jay says 11 cars run out of petrol across the Auckland motorway grid during last Friday night's gridlock. And many people I know have already blown their weekly budget to run their cars to and from work and school because of the muck up on the Auckland roads. Jay says it's going to be tough and tough at Christmas for many. It's been a hard year for humankind. Regards from Jade. What it has been, Jade. Thank you for your text. Good to have your company. Elaine says, hi, Tony. Hi, Elaine. Elaine says, I used to love eggs with fried bread and baked beans, followed by homemade apple pie and whipped cream. Best regards from Elaine. <laughs> oh, Elaine. <laughs> That'll have people wanting a bit of a snack tonight. Homemade apple pie and whipped cream by Job's. You're in the pound seats, Elaine. Nice to get your text. Thomas says, oh, the, the food's on the flow. Hi, Tama who says, hey, Tony, lamb's fried with bacon, mushrooms, and cream. Awesome, says Tama. Does sound awesome, actually, Tama. Thank you for that. And a text here from Amy. Good evening, Amy. Amy says, Tony, my favourite meal was mum's roast dinners, but second was a simple meal of what used to be Sunday's bread. It was so warm when you bought it home and sliced or mashed bananas on it with a generous spread of butter. Mmm, regards from Amy. The warm Sunday bread, Amy. Gee, I can almost smell it from here. 0800 844 747. Give me a call. Or if you can't, do what Amy did. No, not the Sunday bread. Send a text to 3920. When I say Kiwi kids are, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Are we yeah, I thought so. It's a pretty good effort to make it to 90, and New Zealand's favourite breakfast has done just that. Everyone's got a weak big moment that pops in mind, and now the AM show wants to hear yours. Every entry will go in the draw to win a year's supply of wheat picks, and the Z's may even come to your hometown and have breakfast with you. Head to magic.co.nz and share your moment with us now. Magic Talk. It's double deal time. Magic Talk. Great to have your company tonight. Thank you for listening. Always good to know you're there. And if you're travelling anywhere and anything to report, let's know. I hope it's a safe journey for you. But if there's any conditions, road conditions or weather conditions that we need to know about that you can share, you can call me and tell me, eh? I know 800 844 747. If you're working tonight, well, you're in reasonable company. Loads of us are, so I hope you're working hard. Pace yourself, but working hard. And if you're resting, I hope you're resting well. You're feeling good too.
Thank you for listening. Yeah, the weather change is developing in parts of the South Island. Moving north as well, so the North Island gets to experience it too. What's it like where you are? Anything to report so far? A bit of rain. I'm told not cold. Bits of wind here and there and loads of rain in different places. But the temperatures are pretty mild. It's interesting, isn't it, eh? It's a good time of the year. I like spring. It delivers all these different dynamics. Except the wind. I'm not a big fan of the wind. It's a bit destructive. Anyway, we can discuss those things too. And the bit on the side question, yeah, what was your totally, absolutely favourite childhood meal? We'll talk about that too when you call on 0800 844 747. Mary Rose, good morning. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good, thank you. Good. You're asking about favourite meals. Well, yeah, when you were well, a long time ago, Mary Rose, when you were a lass, mm-hmm. what was your favourite, mm-hmm. your absolutely over-the-top favourite childhood meal? One was going to Gore through the cosy tea rooms and having peas and potatoes and pies with a mint sauce. Peas, potato and pies and mint sauce. I remember mm-hmm. when you could get peas and potato and pies at a cafe or something. It was a, it was a jolly yes. fine comfort food snack meal, wasn't it, eh? Yes. The cosy tea rooms put on good meals in those days. And what a great name. What a great name for the tea The cosy tea rooms. Where about was, yes. where, where, where was the cosy tea rooms? In Gore. In Gore. <laughs> it's, it's not there anymore. No, it's not, <laughs> unfortunately. And I always enjoyed mum's roast dinners with all the trimmings, mint sauce included. Yum. And then there would be pineapple foam, ice cream, whipped cream, fruit salad, flummery, Spanish cream, the works. Absolutely delightful. Crikey, you, you've described a banquet, Mary Rose. And then Mum would have a fruitcake made as well. We'd have a piece of that as well. Yum. We had the good old coal ranges in those days, which made the best fruitcakes there were. Pretty good. And and Mum's got, and Dad's too, but usually it was Mum's. They got to know... It was always Mum... They got to know how those ovens work, those those wood or coal-fired mm. ovens. There was a knack yes. in getting them to the right temperature and maintaining that, That's especially right. for doing yes. something like baking Absolutely. a cake. Eh? Mm. But you could never get Dad to make a, um, do a meal because it, all he did was boil a jug and it would um, boil dry. <laughs> one of my granddad used to say about uh, one, of, one of my uncles, he said he could burn water. Sounds like your husband. Yes, mm. yes, yes. I'll give you a bit of a laugh. Okay. I've been having a think about it for ages. When um, oh, a few years back, my husband and I were working with an elderly couple who had a Jersey stud. Right. Cows. Mm-hmm. And he used to show cattle, well, from Christchurch down to Dunedin, sometimes in the Caracal. But this particular day, it was in Ashburton. And I went up with them, and I was standing there watching and listening to what was going on. And this woman and this man arrived, and she said to me, she said, where do you live? And I said, I'm a roo. Oh, she said, you're Alec Neal's country. I said, yes, but I wouldn't. I liked Alec Neal better than I did Jenny Shipley. And I thought, oh, okay. So then I went back to the elderly man, and I said, who was that I was talking to? He said, don't you know? I said, no, I've got no idea in the wild world. He said, that was Jenny Shipley. <laughs> Had to be and done. I went red, <laughs> and I went red from my chest right up to my head. And I still giggle about that. I think it's quite, it, that must have been away back in the 90s. So it's a good long time ago when it, all happen. 20 something years ago. Happen. 20 something years ago. Yes. You still record it and you, and you can still, I bet you can still feel that embarrassment as well when you blushed. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've never felt so embarrassed in all my life, I don't think. See, it's a big, it was, I it's thought a big, it was quite a, a clever one. It's a big reminder 
to all of us about be careful what you're saying to strangers, eh? Is, that's right. Absolutely. Well, I didn't know who she was. I had no idea in the wide world who she was. Well, you did after that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I thought that was quite clever. But uh, that's the uh, things that I sort of keep in my mind, all these funny things, and it's marvellous how it they come out every now and again, and they and, 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 and it's interesting, and it's and it's a time. It's a it's a we we are in the election mode, so it's a good little tale when you talk about politicians yes, like that as well, yes, Mary Rose. Yes, uh, how, absolutely. How, how's your um, how's your decision making going with regard to the upcoming election? Have you decided? Have you made your decision on how you're going to vote in the election and in the referenda as well? I don't know. I really don't know how I'm going with that. It's um, a real push and pull type of thing, I guess. And I'm not, um, I don't know how I'll go with it. So how do you think you're going to get to make a decision? What, what are you going to do? What sort of information are you going to seek? Or? Well, they're going to have to um, work out what they're going to do. I don't mean for myself, but for a lot of the elderly people. They're going to have to think about them as well. Mm. And they're not doing that. The elderly people have been around for decades and they've done a lot of things for these young for younger people, but that that they haven't recognised. And I think it's sad. Yeah, we need we need to value everybody, don't we? And everybody really has the same value, Mary Rose. That's right. and we need to have yes, good respect for when people get a bit more yes. vulnerable in life. We need to step up yes. and give them more support yes, as required exactly. as well. Yeah, no, nice nice comment that you bring, Mary Rose. Thank you for that. Hey, very quickly, just before you go, you've already told us a bit on the side, and that was that very long list of wonderful <laughs> foods that you could share at home when <laughs> mum did the baking and the cooking yes. and even oh, polishing it yes. off with the fruitcake. But just, just very quickly, talked about television before. You know, some people yes. some people are sort of easing off the TV because of the internet and other things. You still watch a bit of television, do you? Yes, I do. Do you have a favourite show? You that you, is there a TV show that you really don't like to miss that you feel that you have to see? A yes, there What's is one. And I've only just spotted it in the last few months. It was my eldest boy that told me all about it. Do you remember Chips? I do. Well, I sit and watch that. California Highway Patrol. Yes, absolutely, Natalie. Do you? And you've rediscovered it after all these decades, have you? Yes, yes. Because the children and I used to sit and watch that when it was on years and years ago, when they were young. And now you're watching um, it again. And I'm watching it again. Fantastic. And some of some of the things that's been on, I don't remember ever seeing it in those days. Oh well, it's like it's like a new, fresh look, isn't it? Eh? So chips. Oh, it's lovely. Not and now chips isn't your favourite food from your childhood, but it's your favourite program <laughs> from your young yeah. adulthood. Need to talk, Mary Rose. Thank you for your call. Jess says, Tony, you make me hungry now. My favourite meal was mum's steak and kidney stew with carrots and parsnip mash and lots of butter and pepper. Leeks and white sauce and creamy mashed potatoes with onion and parsley in it. And we always had either bread and butter or sago or pearl barley or tapioca pudding afterwards. Yum, says Jess. Sounds very yum, actually, Jess. Kirsty says, good evening, Tony. Good evening, Kirsty. Kirsty says, it's 14 degrees in Edendale at present, with the nor'wester blowing. It's pretty mild. 14 degrees? That's warm, eh? For this time. Thank you, Kirsty. And a text here from Pauline. Good evening, Pauline, who says, hi, Tony. My favourite meal when I was a child was fish and chips, still wrapped in the paper. We tore a hole in the top of the packet and ate them with our fingers. Yummy. Regards from Pauline. The best, Pauline, I remember doing that. Eh? The fish and chips were rolled up in the white paper, then wrapped in the newspaper, and you tore one end open, and it was as hot as. And it was almost like an endless supply of chips, wasn't it? Eh? You stuck your fingers in and pulled another hot chip out. Lovely memory that you share, Pauline. Thank you for your text. 
0800 844 The text number is 3920. Angie's here. Yes, Angie Skerritt. She's at News Hub. She's going to be here at midnight to give us another bulletin, tell us what we need to know. And then we'll come back and talk, eh? Talk with Mike. And we'll talk with you too when you call me on 0800 844 747. And we'll also discuss whatever we talk about. We'll also discuss a bit on the side question, which is what was your totally absolute favourite childhood meal? Every meal, some would say. Breakfast, lunch and dinner every day. No, but what was it? Was there a particular childhood meal? We've heard some great ones so far tonight. Your absolute favourite childhood meal. You can tell me about that when you call me on 0800. 844-747. Right now it's midnight. News up time at Magic Talk.